Good morning and welcome to my speech. Uh, I'll talk about how to create professional templates with a LibreOffice writer. I am Gabriele Ponzo and uh, I am uh, self-employed. Uh, my company, let's say, name is GPS. I'm a founder of Terni Linux User Group and also of Libre Italia Association, where I'm actually the vice president. I'm a full member and the former chairman of TDF's uh, membership committee, and I'm certified uh, LibreOffice Pro professional trainer and migration expert. First of all, this is the agenda, so what we are going to talk about. And um, let's move on to the first point, so the importance of, the corporate, of a corporate template. As you can see from the pictures I have included in this slide, uh, you can see that these are three different documents and I try to align them the best I could to let you see how they are different, how they look different from each other. And this is one of the problems of having, of not having a corporate template or at least not using it. So in this case, you can, we can see that regardless to the, let's say, uh, not proper use of the uh, word processing, so spaces and tabs and whatever, but the logo, for example, is every time different as sides, at, or at least as uh, position, and also as a quality. As you can see here, this is really um, scaled and compressed. So uh, while this is here, here, so these are three different documents from the very same entity, which is my municipality, and uh, they look so different. This is just because they probably don't have, or at least they didn't use, our template. So this is one of the uh, important points of having a corporate template <laughs> and obviously to use them. Let's say we can talk about uniformity at least. So to give always the very same impression, the very same um, image of the entity of the comp company or whatever uh, to the general public when you know uh, deploying and uh, delivering uh, documents. What should it contain? So uh, What's the meaning of having a template? Why? We already talked about the uniformity, so to give a, always the very same image of the company, of the entity, or whatever. And, uh, but it is also comfortable and useful to have a template just to, uh, as I say, shorten times to produce a document. Because uh, you can imagine that if you have to, to produce several documents in a day, you can't every time start from scratch and write you know, uh, the company name, the address, and whatever. So obviously it is really useful to have a template also for this reason. So avoid repeating the uh, the typing of text, for example. And um, and this applies to the, the, the header, the footer, and also the body of the document, which can contain the very same things in time, for example, for the, the same kind of document, so you don't have to write again every time. You can prepare customized styles so that you don't have to waste time every time to format the text. So you may have styles already uh, prepared to do this kind of job. And then it's useful to know that more than a template can be issued. What I mean is that obviously, uh, especially big companies or entities or whatever, they may have different departments, for example. So in these cases, um, it could be useful to have different templates for our departments. But it's worth to know that it is possible also to have templates from templates. So this means that we may want to have a general template, let's say, with the company name, with the, uh, the stationary data and whatever, in the heading and in the footer, for example. And then we may uh, create templates from this template for different departments. Now let's see what uh, what can we do, how can we uh, create a template, for example, and uh, I've uh, written down something uh, that usually a template has and how to uh, create it. So first of all, you have to create an empty document and uh, then we should add a, a header and a footer and then write the introduction text and, and so on. Let's say that to shorten the time, I better start from my previous template and I can profit of this, you know, uh, lecture to um, translate in, in English, for example. So this is my company template. And uh, as you can see, it is in Italian at the moment. So let's translate it in English. Uh, wait, okay. So we already have a, a header and a footer, 
let's have a check. So this is the other, and I, I guess it does, doesn't need to be translated because, you know, mobile, telephone, fax, email. So it's international page in this way. It's, it could be English as well as Italian. While the introduction text, so let's translate these. But uh, in the meantime, we could also introduce the um, input fields or input lists with Control F2. Okay, with Control F2, we recall this dialog, uh, which has uh, among the functions, you know, the possibility to um, to recall this kind of. Uh, objects. So in this case, we need input list. We may start from, you know, uh, uh, person. So we could introduce, for example, uh, Miss and Mrs. Mister. Kind of estimated, I guess. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not so so much prepared on this. <laughs> And uh, let's stop here because I mean the um, the uh, the topic is I think is clear. So inserting this, I will have the opportunity to choose among those um, uh, titles. Now we could also add something like the address here. And in this time, in this case, we will use our input field. So reference company add address okay insert now it prompts for the default value ink or ltg i don't know okay so this is a quick you know demo of uh, preparing now here obviously it would be subject then uh I would just remove this. I I have already this kind of data here, but um, it, it uh, deserves to be explained how to insert such data. I'm uh, talking about the page number and the total count total count of pages. It is really simple. You can use it from here. Insert field, and the most used are here. So page number, for example, slash insert field page count. Those are really common, so you can use it here really easily. But uh, if you miss something here, you, you can go here with Control F2 again. And then, like, as you can see on the document tab, you have several uh, fields, several data and properties of the document itself. Page, page number again, and so on, and um, sender, statistics, and whatever. In this case, we will just insert the page count again. But if we want to, for example, uh, insert templates, yeah, I want to uh, state in the file I will issue the template name, which is something that big companies um, used to do. So, for example, I could do something like um, file name here, or template name, much better, insert. And this is an automatic field, obviously. We so hard to... Well, I already had the, the header, but it's easy to understand how to do that. The footer we modified to introduce some document field and document info. We missed a placeholder. To be honest, it is already there, but i just show you how to do that. So we, you go to um, Functions, and you have Placeholder. And you may specify you know, the kind of placeholder, especially, usually it is a text. Uh, and you you can't you know specify if the text will be a date or something like uh, something else, but you may specify if it is not a text, so table, frame, image, or object. This means that if when, for example, if you specify an image, when you click on the placeholder, it just uh, prompts you for the inserting of an image, so it can be useful sometimes. Say that in this case, I just specify in ISO format, for example, and the reference is. Uh, doc oops date and then I insert it okay and uh, this is nothing more than just you know a rim um, recaller something to you know you just have to uh, you could replace the text here but it would stay in this format so to be honest the placeholder just remember that you have to, to write a 
particular kind of text, but usually you just overwrite it. I will replace in the real document something like, you know, uh, and whatever. So what I'm going to show you now is how to uh, introduce a conditional section in this case. So first of all, we have to insert a variable. So function, no, variable, sorry, set variable, text. The name of variable is uh, project, let's say, project name. And the value is Alice. And then I just hit insert. Okay. So let's move this away. Now, what I do here is insert uh, sec where is section section. Sorry. Okay. Section. Then I just call it uh, sect Alice. Oh, Alice. Sorry, <laughs> Alice description task. And then I use a condition here, which is project name. I saw that the hyphen was removed. So project name. Equals Alice or Alice. Or to be honest, uh, what, sh what would be better? Because this is the hide condition. So I would write something like uh, differs from and then also this. This means that uh, I have to show uh, to show this section just and only if the project name is Alice. Alice. So let's introduce this section. Then this is author text. I don't know if you know it. It's just I wrote a. Uh, uh, a word like which was lorem and then f3 and this is let's say the section to be shown if the uh, the, the value of this um, variable is alice then we could do the very same thing here with um, insert section and uh, then let's call it sect uh, i don't know okay then hide and then uh, it was project name is not making okay so insert and then we can't see it just because the the value of the variable at the moment is not making so let's double click on it as you can see now the 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 dialog prompts for the value of the the new value of the va the variable so i just write down me k and then now we can see this other section so the the purpose of this kind of you know um conditional paragraphs is uh, for example in, in cases um recently how to prepare a company uh template where there was a description of several projects, but uh, instead of having the user to delete the all the projects which were not mentioned on that particular issue of the template, so let's say, for example, it, in that case it was um, uh, an offer or um, a tender request, so there was the description of the project where the tender was, you know, in, intended and meant to be uh, implemented. So the previous version of the template uh, contained all the descriptions of all the projects. In this case, I kept all those descriptions, but I uh, automatically let the, the the system hide the the ones which are not um, mentioned and not in the, in the subject. So let's say that uh, the. Okay, this is the, the description of the Mickey project. So as you can see, now if I write something like, uh, I don't know, um, something different from the both, as you can see, no one of that section are displayed as shown. But if I match, okay, 
the name of uh, an existing uh, section, it will be shown. So this is really interesting, isn't it? And the reason to do that, as I, again, is uh, you know um, to automate as much as possible the, um, the work of the creation of the document. So indeed, why and when to automate and lock contents? Uh, mm, it's really sad to say, but most of the users are not skilled. I mean, it's not their fault. They have not be, been prepared. They have not been you know, uh, trained. So they don't know uh, how to use the uh, word processors as they should. So <laughs> at the end, it's much better if they don't touch the document too much and uh, leave it uh, the way it is. Uh, to avoid, you know, uh, messing up with it. So in this case, you avoid the mess up, but also you ease their work and uh, uh, speed up the work uh, because they just have to choose some field, uh, as we saw, and uh, and automatically the rest of the document is, let's say, done. And we we will also see how to lock the uh, contents because, uh, for example, we could also let's say that. I could do this, select all this content, then I could insert a section and again, and I call it header, and then I protect. I could protect it with a, with a password, this is the common usage, but I won't because now at the moment it's just for demo reason purposes. So, And then I just, okay, it is uh, protected, right? I go to sections and unprotect it, and then I just paste all the you know all of these. If you do this uh, at the very first moment, you can uh, avoid having this uh, spare paragraph. By the way, I just deleted. So at the moment, and now I'm going to um, to protect that section without a password at the moment. But as you can see, you can't write inside it. You can't move the logo. And also, please notice that it is something useful sometimes also for positioning a logo, not uh, in the header or not. What I mean is that, let me unprotect it, and then let's go to the uh, gallery and let's take such as this. I will bring it here and then reduce it this way. Oops. Okay, and then move it here. If I move the the anchor within, oh, let me do just cut and paste. As you can see now, the anchor is within the section. I can move the the object here, which is outside the area of the of the section. But when I lock the section again in this way. As you can see, I can't move, I can't resize these, but also this one. And this is really interesting. I've been doing this for a very so for for a company, local but international company. So uh, let's continue. There are some unclear situation here because you you've seen that I have to achieve that you know behavior of hiding sections. I inserted an, a variable, which is fine, but is uh, something that uh, probably is not the the best situation. And what I mean is that, um, as you have seen, you have to uh, double click on it to uh, set the value, and then this dialog is kind of technical uh, dialog. So the um, common user could be how, how to say uh, somehow um, feel lost, you know, in such a technical dialog. While I've um, you have seen that in this case, for example, this is not such technical this is you know just one choice and then you know there is just this edit button but it is really easy to use so it would be much easier and better to use um, this one in particular because this is a um, an input field so you have freedom of you know you have the freedom to to write whatever you want you don't, don't have to choose why this is an input list so you have to choose something so I could use this to insert the name of the project and then basing of that name uh, hide the section as we have seen. But the problem is that um, usually it doesn't create a variable. So I don't have a variable to mention in the expression for hiding the section. 
and this is something really particular because um, uh, there is no time to show you, but uh, uh, if you first create a variable and then hide it and then create an input field mentioning that variable, sometimes you, uh, uh, you can achieve such a uh, behavior. Uh, you can see here, where is the pointer, okay. Uh, for example, I tried many times, you know, the very first input field, there wasn't any variable uh, connected, let's say, related. Then I declared a variable var2, and then I tried with the input field, and I didn't succeed. Then I declared a third variable, I recalled it as a variable, then I uh, created an input field, uh, let's say connected to somehow to the variable 3 and then I was uh, able to recall the value even if the, va the, val the variable value was this while this was the text written in the, in the input field so some strange behavior or, or at least not that clear um, even for an experienced user but by the way and anyway there is no uh, no way to um, associate, let's say, a variable to an input list, and this is really sad. Uh, here, I um, just uh, reported the, uh, the the code of the document on this document. Okay, so you may see in the XML code uh, generated by LibreOffice Writer uh, what happened when I created the first variable, when I declared a, a variable and uh, sorry the, the the input field the variable and whatever and so far and so forth and here this is a um a manual attempt to trick it let's say so i just you know tried to um recall manually because this text i just wrote manually just copying and pasting obviously but um it didn't work as you can see because i uh, after that i mm, modified the the chosen item of the list and recalling uh, didn't vary just report the the thing uh, written in the code so this is almost unclear and uh, i would like to uh how to say to uh, to improve and to go deeper with the developers possibly then how so this is uh, what i have just explained let's say that if you just have to recall an item you could use a trick like these you can set a uh, cross reference so set cross reference and uh, this was what was it uh title okay and then you create a reference over that and then you may recall it whatever you want here for example insert reference uh, reference itself so miss so if i vary here and I choose, for example, estimated. Now you can see estimated. But this is a trick. I mean, uh, it's a workaround. It doesn't work. It is really dirty just because, okay, it works just to repo the text and it's fine. But if you want to base an expression to hide a section, for example, as, like we saw before, uh, you can't. Uh, if you have a, an input list, you can't. With the input field, you may have a success, and I did it, but you know it, it is tricky to uh, to achieve it. So finally, let's say that we have created more or less a, a template. Let's see how to save it as a template and uh, what's the behavior then. So, um, oops. Uh, yeah, you have two ways to save it as a uh, as a template. The first one is via the menu. Uh, there is a template and then you uh, you can do this save as a template and it prompts for the category and whatever this is probably the best way uh, especially if you're not so if experienced otherwise you may just do save as and choose as the um, kind of type of document the template this way and let's say uh, GPS and okay Let's see what happens. Now the document is saved. I close it because this is a template itself. If I go to the uh, folder, mm, it was document, and okay, I double click on it. As a template, what you'll notice is that, first of all, here, 
the name of the document is untitled because the property of a template is that when you open it, it just issues a new document based on the, te on the template. And as you can see, the, this a really good feature is that when you open the template, it prompts you for the, uh, the fields. So the very first thing is, was the title. But the problem is that the position of the dialog, in this case, I can't see what is that. I mean, yes, I have to choose uh, among Miss, Mrs, Mr, and estimated. Okay, but to, to place it where? Here. <laughs> the problem is that, you know, in this case. So let's say that I choose estimated, and then it prompts you again for the next field, which is really fine, which is really good. But again, the 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 window, the dialog window, uh, I've set uh, on the on the position where it was before. So I have to move it again, and so on. And now I could write uh, S R L, for example. This is Italian, okay. And that's it. As you can see, it didn't prompt for this because this was a variable and not a field. Again. So it's really beautiful this feature to prompting the user for the, fr the fields to, uh, to fill in, but uh, it can't be, it could be, and should be from my point of view, uh, improved uh, in not only about the position of the window, but also for the, um, the highlighting. And I show you why. Okay, and I open many field examples, OTT, okay, these I have prepared in advance. Okay, now it prompts for the very first field. First of all, as you can see, as before, it is uh, uh, overlapping and is, you know, um, hiding the, the fields itself. But by the way, now we, it, is, uh, it is prompting for with or without. Now it is simple just because there are many, but, you know, with or without, you can see this is with. But when there are really many of them, there is no highlighting. So there is no way to understand which is the field you are prompted for. So, for example, I choose without, and then again, move it and field or list, let's say, list, and again, stays or remains, stays. And again, dialog, um, I don't know, modal window, for example. And that's it. So, I've been able to fill in all the fields, and uh, it was really good, but uh, it can't be improved. I hope you enjoyed this talk and uh, you learned something and I thank you so much for attending and I'm obviously uh, free to uh, to answer any question in the, in the specific room and uh, see you again.